Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in. It's Brain Smasher back again to tell you about metal. I'm back from Amsterdam. I'm really tired, uh, kind of groggy, but I just wanted to check in with y'all, tell you what's been going on, and give you a distraction from all the bullshit that's going on that isn't metal. Throughout all the bullshit that's going on, there's still metal. There's always going to be metal. We're always going to love it, hopefully. So, let's carry on. Um, I picked up a couple of CDs in Amsterdam. You know, one of the things I learned about Amsterdam was that it is not a metal city. You know, I thought, holy, when I first thought, you know, I was going to be going to Amsterdam, I thought, holy shit, I might be able to catch, like, I don't know, Horna on tour or something, like, really, you know, exotic bands that don't come to the States very often. Something wild, you know. It didn't happen. Nothing happened. Nothing metal happens in Amsterdam. I've done tons of research online to try and find some metal bar or record store or community or something. I even messaged Infidel Amsterdam and I was like, hey man, I'm coming to town. Uh, what should I check out? Record stores, clubs, you know. Uh, he mentioned like one club and I looked it up to see if there were any shows going on and there weren't. Uh, he said to visit one record store, which I did, and so I picked up a couple of things from there. But it's, it wasn't like a metal-only record store. It was a really big record store, and it was really cool. Uh, but, you know, I didn't find much. Here's what I got. This is uh, a band called Cataplexia. This album is called Supreme Authority. And I hadn't heard of this band at all. I just thought, you know, this cover looks like it's by Dan Seagrave or something. It's on extreme music, and these guys put out some good stuff. Eh, I'll buy it on this for five bucks. Five euro, actually. Um, you know, I, I just wanted to have something to take home. I didn't uh, I didn't do much shopping when I was in Amsterdam. We did a lot of sightseeing. We saw some amazing art. Uh, ate amazing, amazing food. Traveled around, saw a bunch of stuff. Met a bunch of really cool people. Um, I'm going to be doing like a video recap of it all. I shot some videos and stuff. I'm going to be showing some pictures, things like that. So I'll get into that uh, a little bit more and tell you more about our, our, uh, our trip. Uh, so this is like just, you know, collection update, uh, checking in to see everybody, to let you know it was great. Um, so this is another CD I got. This is the Axis of Perdition. Um, this is a band I listened to many, many years ago when they were more active, probably 10 or 10 years ago. So I don't really know if this is good or not, but three euro, whatever, thought I would pick it up. I just wanted to have some things to take home. Uh, this is on code 666. Um, so, yeah, I'm looking forward to giving that a listen. I did listen to the Cataplexia, and it was pretty cool. Um, I was really impressed by the drumming. It's not really my kind of thing. Uh, I guess I would say it's more kind of like uh, immolation or, you know, fans of that kind of thing. Honestly, Infidel Amsterdam would be the kind of guy that would be into this sort of thing. Uh, not my usual thing. Anyways, uh, right before I left, I got this in the mail. Now, this is Heavenly's Virus album. Uh, now this is some of the best fucking power metal I've ever heard. Um, it's not overly shreddy like a lot of stuff is. Um, the vocals are really what sell it for me. Um, but incredible songwriting, man. It's so memorable and catchy. I get these songs stuck in my head so much. When I put, Every time I put this thing on, I just go fucking nuts. I've been meaning to pick this up for a really long time. I've only got their album, Sign of the Winter. That's, that's the only one I've had in the past. I need to pick up a couple of their other ones, I think. But incredibly talented band, completely underrated. Uh, I highly recommend you check this out if you like anything like, you know, Rhapsody or Blind Guardian. Um, I really think these guys deserve a lot more respect in a genre that is mostly full of cheesy fucking garbage. This is legit quality, great, great stuff. Um, Okay, so next one is actually what we're listening to. It's uh, Aeternus's Beyond the Wandering Moon. Now, this isn't an album that's new to me, but uh, I'll tell you what the story is, basically. I bought this on CD, uh, the old Hammerheart version, back when it came out, like probably 97, 98 or so. Um, and I kind of liked it. I was like, yeah, this is kind of good. Um, it never really blew my mind or anything. And for some reason, I just got rid of it. It just, it never really clicked with me. I always meant to revisit it. Uh, and I always kind of regretted uh, getting rid of it uh, back then. 
because now the, the version that I got rid of is worth a bunch of money. But anyways, I always meant to revisit that album uh, thinking uh, maybe it just isn't for me, maybe it's just not something that I'm understanding or into right now, besides the fact that I love their second album, And So The Night Became. So it's weird that I could never really like click with this album for some reason. I don't, I don't know what it was. I still couldn't put my finger on it, but the other day I was listening to it and I put it on and it fucking blew me away. I, I honestly didn't expect it to really just like level me like it did. It fucking slayed me. This album is really, really, really good. And I was talking to Marty Worm about it the other day for a second, and he said uh, something that really clicked with me. He said it's like the black metal bolt thrower. And you know what? That just makes perfect fucking sense. That's such a great uh, way to explain this band or this album in particular to anyone. Um, it's really guttural, really just like baritone guitars and vocals. Um, it's got a real, you know, lower timber to it, uh, but the songs and melodies are real subtle and real intimate and great. Um, so I picked this version up. This is, uh, I found that all their versions of this album were kind of pricey, and I really wanted to get it. I just, after having it level me so hard, I was just like, I gotta own this. So I went ahead and bought a version of it that's <laughs> kind of a piece of shit. So on Discogs, it was going for five bucks. I was like, what? Because I figured this was worth a bunch of money. And the version that was listed for five bucks said water damage. Uh, and I was like, you know what? I bought a water damage CD the other day and I was fine with it. I really don't care. It's the disc I care about. Uh, that's what I'm gonna be listening to. So I went ahead and bought it and he sent it over uh, from France. Uh, I don't regret it, but this is really fucked up. Uh, yeah, as you can see, the booklet is just damaged as all fucking hell. The pages are never going to come apart. But like I said, the disc is what counts. That's what I'm going to listen to. That's what I'm going to spin. And I'm really glad I bought it. It's such a good record. If you haven't heard it, check it out. It's so cool. This is another, uh, the last release. So this is Syndrome uh, Ruins of Resurrection. No, just Resurrection. The Complete Collection. Uh, this is... Uh, one of my favorite releases from this year, but it is a discography of a band called Syndrome. Uh, two of their full lengths and a live CD. The two full lengths came out in 1987 and, no, 88 and 91. Yeah, 88 and 91. The albums on this are called Into the Halls of Extermination and Vault of Inner Conscience. This is like really high speed, Pretty technical thrash metal, just lightning fucking speed. Um, this band was from Chicago. I'm kind of a connoisseur of like Chicago metal, even though I fucking hate the city um, itself. By the way, um, no, I'll just finish talking about this and I'll tell you another thing. You know what I kind of hate about Century Media is how they put out these albums and they just waste so much space. Like, look at this. You have the album cover three fucking times. You know, it's just a photoshopped forgettable thing. You could have just put it on the cover and used some different artwork on the different... It just seems like, why are you putting the same thing, three different spots on the the packaging? You could have, you know, included some other photos. Anyways, this is a pretty cool retrospective. I haven't uh, listened to the live stuff yet. Uh, the live show is from their Chicago show, their home show, when they toured with Death on the Scream Bloody Gore tour in 88. So, it's got a super thick booklet with uh, liner notes from the band, uh, a little bit of notes from some other famous thrash musicians like Michael Amott, uh, Terry Butler from Massacre and Obituary, guys from Whiplash, but this is kind of one of those bands that the underground knows about and considers them fucking complete classics, but there hasn't been a proper release of this stuff for many, many, many years, so it's really cool to see this stuff. Uh, finally be offered in a double CD with the bonus live show. Uh, I would say if you're into uh, really any thrash, like German stuff, uh, Creator, you know, uh, Destruction, Sodom, you got, you would definitely love this, but it's not really like that, but um, you would definitely love this if you're into any of that kind of mainstream thrash. But I guess a little more specifically, I would say this is a little bit more akin to something like uh, Hellwitch. 
which is an American thrash band that I'm really nuts about. But anyway, so that does it for the CD update. Uh, before I did go to Amsterdam, I stayed in Chicago for a couple of days for another art show, and I managed to see Vector play all of their new album live. Uh, it was like a last minute thing. I didn't even know Vector was playing in Chicago, and a friend of mine posted on Facebook, he's like, hey, I'm gonna be in Chicago. Anybody wanna hang out? And I was like, yeah, I wanna hang out. Why, what are you doing? Oh, I'm going to see Vector. Why don't we just go fucking see Vector? So yeah, that's what we did. They were amazing. I'm completely nuts about that fucking band. They're so utterly talented. It's, a, it's insane. If you get a chance to see Vector on this tour, do it. Um, they'll blow you away. And they're playing the whole album in its entirety. Plus, if you encore, they're playing two songs. They play the song from Black Future. They play the title track from Black Future, which is one of the best thrash songs ever written, in my opinion. Uh, and they played a song from Outer Isolation. Yeah, so definitely check out Vector. Check out any of these if they sound interesting to you. These are some really good albums. You know, I talk a lot about records that are kind of average. <coughs> but The Syndrome fucking rules. One of the best releases of the year. Eternus, total black metal classic, uh, and you're listening to it right now. Heavenly, amazing power metal record. Do yourself a favor and check those out if you get a chance. I'll put links in the description to everything. Thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, uh, and stay tuned for my Amsterdam video coming up. I don't know, whenever I get around to it. Anyways, we'll talk to you later. Bye.